Hello, dear ones. Hello, family. You are at home. You're at home with Jim and Joy. We want you to be a part of the show where we lift up the sacredness and dignity of every human being, marriage, and the family. So email us, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Send us a tweet, EWTN hashtag Jim and Joy. And you can call us right now, 205 271 2980 or toll free, 800 221 9460. The phone lines are open. It's like being in our very home. We want to hear your thoughts on life, marriage, and the family. Well, Joy, it's been a wonderful week for yes. us, for our family. The banquet was tremendous. Yes. Our pregnancy medical center banquet, which we hold yearly. And I wanted to share just for a few moments about one of the women who's a client of ours, a mother, who shared a testimony at our banquet. And I tell you, I was transfixed as she shared her story. This was, as I looked at her, her passion for life and for her child, compared to where she was several months before. Right. Because she had come to our pregnancy medical center after receiving a, a prenatal diagnosis that was problematic, to say the least, yeah. about the little one within her. And so this child had a genetic abnormality, and they shared the fact of that with her. That's difficult enough. Mm -hmm. But then some of these people put a spin on it. Um, and really portrayed this child with this genetic abnormality, um, marginalized this child to say the least, and really spun it and gave a perspective to this, um, and really made that child seem, the picture they were painting, and I hate to say this word, seemed grotesque. Right. What was gonna happen to this child? Mm -hmm. And that was their perspective. And uh, she came away with the sense that the only reasonable thing to do, mm -hmm. as they were saying to her, was to abort her child. Right. And she came to us, to our medical center. I don't know how she got there, but I remember our meeting with her and I spent some time with her as you did as well. And she was just like, she got punched in the mm -hmm. stomach. She was just mm -hmm. like jelly in the chair there, sharing this diagnosis. But, but more than that, it was the perspective. It was the spin uh, that they were giving her that the responsible thing to do, it seemed for the sake of this child, for your sake, for everybody, you know. To make it, everything easy to make it easy. And, and there are just some things that aren't easy. Right. Right? Disabilities, special needs, chronic illness, life, marriage ain't right. easy, okay? But, but, Four but, kids. So if it's not easy, solve mm -hmm. it through killing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So we shared with her and spoke with her about the value of every human being. First of all, we just listened to her and right. cried with her mm -hmm. and began to share, hey, nobody's perfect, including mm -hmm. your child in the womb. If Are we going to kill one another because we're not perfect and mm -hmm. and uh, yes this is uh, very difficult but it shouldn't be totally we talked we shared right. and you know what she said she said I believe what you're saying I'm mm -hmm. a Christian she says but with all this other perspective like I, I, I was just falling into this way she chose life for right. that child and from that moment forward she was transformed she really became more fully the mother of that child mm -hmm. prayed for that child told those people I'm having this child and anyway, she did bear that child, and the child died in the process of, of birth. Mm -hmm. And she shared about loving that child, and yes. holding that child, and praying over that child, and weeping over that child, and rejoicing over the child, and dressed that child up, and mm -hmm. uh, had a little hat on the child, and, and a bow. A and fabulous dress. And then we had the funeral mm -hmm. for that child. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was weeping. Many women were there. And it really was a day of dealing, I thought, in a lot of ways, with pregnancy loss. I think right. a lot of people there were dealing with miscarriage, stillbirth, and abortion. And abortions. Uh, but it was a great opportunity that this child gave the mm -hmm. sanctity of this child mm -hmm. and that she brought this child into the world even though the child didn't live the child lived for a time she had three other kids and she brought each one up to that casket and said this is your sister yes this is your sister mm -hmm. this is your sister mm -hmm. and then she was sharing that with hundreds of people mm -hmm. the gospel of life the goodness of life I just wanted to, to share that and to, to lift up Dorothy and her daughter Demaya and that choice that every human life is sacred, not based on longevity of life or health and well-being, simply because you are. Right, and, and Dorothy shared so beautifully the power about the pronouncement from the medical yeah. community and what that does to us. And we're confused and we're scared. And so we want to say to our a listening audience, you know, if you had that and you believed what they said was true and you maybe had an abortion, that there's healing for you and there's hope. And so we want you to know, you to know that, that, yeah. that God wants to restore the essence of your soul in that process. There's a lot of good groups dealing with 
all of that. You can always write us at jimandjoy at ew10.com. We'll make sure you can find a good group for support. But Joy, you want to share with us here? Well, I am very thrilled and excited to let you know of this fabulous item on EWTN Religious Catalog. And all you have to do is go to EWTNRC.com. This will be coming to the Pinto House very shortly. I have that feeling, yeah. It is wonderful. It is gold, <laughs> frankincense, and myrrh. It's a beautiful music box. It plays We Three Kings. It plays uh, Joy to the World. And where this is going to go in our home, it's item number GFMO. Eight. And we bought also on Religious Catalog uh, the fabulous baby Jesus in the manger with the hay. And this is going to go there under the Christmas tree to show the grandchildren the history keeping Jesus in the center of Say Christmas. What's in it again. And we have a 23 karat gold, gold flakes, absolutely fabulous, myrrh and frankincense. That's a beautiful case. And it is just absolutely beautiful. We have the three kings with the magi making their journey, being led by the star. It is beautiful. You know, this is something you might want to purchase, and I'm sure after you're gone, your children will fight over this. And um, I know ours will. Somebody will want to write their name on the bottom of Our it. Our children will fight before. They will fight oh, before. But, but this so, is, somebody's going to steal the gold, I know. It, it. is just beautiful. Okay. So if you want to make your Christmas extra special, we want you to go to EWTMReligiousCatalog.com or call 1-800-854-6316 to purchase this Christmas enhancing gift for your family, for your grandchildren. It's just absolutely beautiful, and I'm excited about it. I told my girlfriends about it this morning, and they were going to order it too. So you don't want to miss out on that. So we're getting ready to head to a break, but when we come back, we're joined by, by our wonderful guests, Gary and Lainey Gagnon, and they're here to talk about raising children with chronic illnesses and trusting in God's perfect plan in the midst of it. So remember, the phone lines are open and you can share your questions and your comment with us. Give us a call at 205-271-2980 or toll free 1-800-221-9460. You are a part of our family and you are at home with Jim and Joy and we'll be right back in a moment. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and we want you to give us a call at 205-271-2980 or toll-free 1-800-221-9460. Now, we have the wonderful privilege of sharing with our beloved friends, Gary and Lainey Gagnon, who are the parents of six, six. children. You're married. 18? Going on 18 years. 18 <laughs> years. Um, and just wonderful, faith-filled couple. And, um, and you've, lived, you've lived well. You haven't been perfect. None of us are perfect. <laughs> but you've loved the Lord in the midst of all of trials and all of the sufferings that, that come your way in life. So why don't you tell our listening audience how you met um, and all about your family. You want to go first? Sure. Well... <laughs> I moved down here about 22 years ago and uh, uh, joined a young adults prayer group, Dominic Savio prayer group, and Lainey came to that group and that's where I first saw her and I saw how beautiful she was sitting there across the uh, room. and Smart man. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how we yeah. met. And you and came down from where? From Maine. Okay. So, yeah. And, uh, and, and we met. both had, um, after college, we had both kind of had a reconversion, mm -hmm. a deepening of our faith, and I joined the prayer group, and that's where we met. So we started our marriage mm -hmm. um, on a good foundation, and um, I think that's what's helped us. We both came from loving, Catholic, strong families. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of did our own little thing in college and got away from it, but came back and started right. off on the right foot. Karen, so I think your family, how many siblings do you have? I have five brothers. Five so. brothers, yeah. wow. So it was a big family, good Catholic family. You know, my parents were 
very instrumental in, in bringing us up in our faith. And you're a hunter, you're a fisherman, yeah. are you? Absolutely. All the brothers. <laughs> and we know your family for years too, just mm -hmm. fantastic. So you saw one another, you saw her mm -hmm. together, and then how long until you started having children? Pretty quickly, everything yeah. happened pretty quick. We dated for a short amount of time, we got married, mm -hmm. We um, got pregnant with Hannah almost immediately, about a month or two after we got married. Um, so we had our first daughter, fell in love with, with parenting and, mm -hmm. um, and hoped to have many, many children. Um, and then our second child, Jonathan, was born. Um, and he seemed, you know, the first few months, he, he seemed sick a lot, but we didn't really know what was going on. Um, and finally, when he was 14 months, he was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. um, which is a genetic condition yeah. that we didn't know. Either one of us um, didn't know anyone in our family that had had it. We, in fact, mm -hmm. we had to Google mm -hmm. cystic fibrosis to find out the details of what it. What are the symptoms mm -hmm. of that? What, what Constantly it eating a lot. Uh, eating a lot and failure to thrive. Didn't mm -hmm. gain a lot. He was right. eating a lot. But, um, and going to the bathroom often. And, and so those were the signs. And so we were Googling it up and looking, you know, that first prognosis is like, you know, we were a little bit in shock, like what is cystic fibrosis? So yeah. I'm going through all these medical journals, yeah. looking up and, and seeing what it, what it was. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a, of a scare for us to, to know mm -hmm. that he was diagnosed with that. And it, uh, we were carriers of the gene. Mm. It's a defective gene. Yeah. And uh, it's one in four children uh, it, it can get cystic fibrosis. So there's a, a good eyes on it. In the it, general so. population? Between no, no, us. Between, between us. Us. Between if you're carriers, carriers one in four. It. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So each time we conceive wow. a child, that child yeah. has a one in four chance Chances of having CF. Yeah. Um, okay. And so that initial diagnosis, it was, um, we were overwhelmed. It was, it was scary. You mm -hmm. read, when you start reading, you hear right. the, <laughs> well, and actually the life expectancy for kids with CF, um, when it was first, you know, in the 1960s, it was, most children didn't live to Six attend kindergarten. Right. Right. Um, and it, I think when Jonathan was diagnosed, it was up to like the 20s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so your initial thought is just um, wow. overwhelmed. And, mm -hmm. and I remember though, the, um, we, we immediately just prayed and entrusted ourselves to the Lord, but we, we sat down at our table at our first little house. And mm -hmm. I remember opening the Bible and just saying, we don't even know where to look. So we literally flipped the Bible open <laughs> and we pointed our finger and it landed on, is it John 11, 4 or 4, 11? I don't remember, but um, it said, this illness is not unto mm. death, mm -hmm. but for the glory of God, mm. that the Son of God might be glorified by means of it. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. just, yeah. it just, it was, it was God's. That just puts it in total mm -hmm. different right. perspective, mm -hmm. right? And we just, from that point mm -hmm. on, we were like, okay, God's with us, we can get through this, mm -hmm. whatever's down the road, we'll, we'll face it, so. Mm -hmm. And then how did, how did your families respond? How, how were they with the whole thing? They were very supportive, very supportive. Good. And, yeah. and good, but it was, um, you know, immediately the first um, thing from the doctors and everyone is, oh, well, you probably won't want to have any more children mm -hmm. because X, Y, and Z. And um, that was just everyone's kind of like, oh, well, you can't because you need to be able to focus on just all your attention child. on this right. child and right. you need to give him all that he needs. And down the road, he's going to, you know, need a lot more care and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Need and um, hospital visits and stays and Which is true, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is true. But, um, but we started hearing these voices, um, you know, from the culture mm -hmm. and we're bombarded every day with, with our culture that says, um, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, just the fear. And, and mm -hmm. you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and so we started saying, no, but what does God say? Right. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and just from the very beginning, um, you know, the, God knew us before he formed us in the womb. God mm -hmm. knew Jonathan. This was a right. part of his plan. This wasn't, mm -hmm. God didn't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it wasn't like he messed up. Oh, he messed mm -hmm. up. That one got CF. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we knew that God was our father and he was trustworthy and, um, mm -hmm. and that we could continue to live open to life and that he would be with us every step of the way. And how was mm -hmm. this, gosh, you, well, you're still young now, but you were even <laughs> younger then. And what was it like for you, Gary, as, as the head of the house, mm -hmm. as, as, as a man, and here you are so young and you get this diagnosis, and what did it do to your inner person? Did it really shake you, <coughs> rattle you, or something strengthen you, or was it both, or w what was it going on in you, your perspective as a dad, as well, a husband? I, yeah, I always, I mean, I always was, was open to life, and, and you know, I myself have diabetes, so I know it's something I had to, to manage. And I knew that Jonathan was gonna have to manage his, his uh, symptom of his um, uh, CF, and he's doing it very well. I mean, he's, he's learned, he's, you know, 
thank God for Lainey. She's very organized, has all those pills organized. And it was, I mean, for me, it was a little bit of a shock, but I had faith in the Lord that he was going to get us through it. And, uh, and I knew we, we could, you know, raise him up to be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And a lot of, another thing I wanted to point out is just the, um, the, some of the things that we heard, these voices, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, we had to sift through the voices and to hear the true voice, but a lot of people would say things like, um, you know, how can you bring a child, you know, in, in regards to having more children? Mm -hmm. They would say, how can you bring a child into the world knowing that child's going to suffer? Right. And it's like, we all mm -hmm. suffer. Yeah. Who among mm -hmm. us doesn't yeah. suffer? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and the value in our, our culture doesn't really um, have a file for that. There's, mm -hmm. and we see that there's no value in suffering and right. people want to end <laughs> suffering. And like mm -hmm. the beautiful Brittany Maynard who just recently mm -hmm. committed suicide because she didn't want to go through any suffering. Right. Um, but there's dignity and beauty and, um, and Christ mm -hmm. suffered and he shows us how to suffer and he suffers with us. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's none of us that will go mm -hmm. through life mm -hmm. without suffering. And yeah. so that to me wasn't a valid or, or we'll say, there's a pill for that. <laughs> Just take a pill for that. Make yeah. all that pain go yeah. away. Make all that. But there, there is redemption in suffering, mm -hmm. and, and that's mm -hmm. you know. And you took that on. So you didn't listen to the world when they said you shouldn't have any more children. No, so in you fact, continued we to Jacob very shortly mm -hmm. after. Okay. Yeah. after. Within, within two years, we were pregnant again with Jacob. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did all the tests when he was born, and he didn't have CF. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if, I couldn't just imagine life if we stopped that, Jonathan. Right. You know, we have we, after we have that we have four children. more children. Right. And and so we had Jacob, and then two years later, after we had Katie, mm -hmm. and then came Allison. And Allison, you know, after you each child. You forgot Michael. No, he's, he's, after, he's after oh, well, Allison. That's right. He's the baby, baby. That's right. That's but right. Uh, you know, after each child, of course, we had him yeah, tested yeah. for CF. Yeah. And when Allison was born and we had her tested, yes, she did have CF. Mm -hmm. And so here we are again. You know, no, but at now least we're now with two, two. Mm -hmm. with 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 this chronic illness. And um, so when we had Allison, you know, we started her on the medicines right away, yeah. and and. She, doing well and we you know we always wanted to raise them as though they were normal you, yeah. if you had them, all of our kids here and lined them up you would never, you would know. never know which right. one had CS. That's true. right you're right and you know we are beautiful and the mm -hmm. quality all of their them. life is no different than right. their brothers and mm -hmm. sisters mm -hmm. I mean they're vibrant and mm -hmm. embrace life and mm -hmm. um, and I think that's so critical that two may have cystic fibrosis but cystic fibrosis doesn't have them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't that's define so, them it doesn't right. define them it doesn't mm -hmm. right i'm not going to be defined by this right. you know, right. i'm a person i'm right. who i am i enjoy life i think that's critical not just for c cf but just anything, anything. in life mm -hmm. any affliction that we have or whatever's going on that that's that's not me Right. That may be a part of what's going on, and that's just absolutely right. critical. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and and Jonathan, he plays football. He's athletic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you said, "You're a sick child. Stay in the room, right. and let's pull the shades, and right. you know, just and wait this are, thing out." You know, there are struggles, and there are, um, and and it was funny because we were saying, "Well, you know, it's okay to, you believe these things." But now it's the living it out right. mm -hmm. and the pressing in that we have to, there are days and it's tough mm -hmm. and not just with CF, but with having a large family. That mm -hmm. in itself mm -hmm. can be a cross mm -hmm. um, and the culture we live. But, mm -hmm. um, I was but the harder yeah. things, oh, I'm sorry, Jim, yeah, go ahead. I was mentioning before the show, you know, seeing Allison, I think it was on Facebook and she was in the hospital and she had this. The I, vest I, on. She had this yeah. big vest yeah. on. Yeah. and. Mm -hmm. But yet she looked, I don't know what the vest is all about, maybe you can share about that, but she still looked like so up, like, like she was a gymnast or something, but she yes. was in this thing. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she is. Oh, no, she is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, but that's just, she's just like, here I am. But, look, but I just like, got to wear this vest today. But it broke today. my just heart like to it. see her, you know, like that. But then it was like, it didn't seem like it was breaking her heart. Like she was like, you know, there. Now, about hospitalizations, is that because she was having an episode or an infection or, or do, they, do they go in periodically or how does that work with going in? Well, they go into the clinic uh, routinely okay. and when they, every, they three months. every three months uh -huh. and when they do lung function tests, if they see that the lung function has gone down, then they'll say, well, let's, let's bring her in. It's called a tune up and they bring them in, put them, uh, put them on uh, antibiotics, IV antibiotics and do chest PT to help uh, uh, relieve the, the congestion in her mm -hmm. chest from the mucus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the, the symptoms of the disease. Uh, they're, they're, chest will build yeah. up in the lungs and mm -hmm. all that and this what, helps bring it out and clear mm -hmm. up their lungs right. and we do we do treatments at home every single day they do their vest and we do what um, is the vest it's it's a 
what I mean, they I've wear and it, it, yeah. it shakes their Change lungs shakes yeah. and helps yeah. clear their right. lungs. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And they do other treatments at home, but when they're in the hospital, they just get more intense. They do it four mm -hmm. times a day versus mm -hmm. at home, maybe once or mm -hmm. twice yeah. a day. But uh, So it's just a more intense time. But um, mm -hmm. you can imagine being in the hospital when you have a large family in and of itself is a trial and a suffering mm -hmm. because you've got the logistics and trying to meet their needs and meet the needs of the children at home. And um, But, you know, that's another beauty in, mm -hmm. in, our suf in our suffering. It's not, you know, I don't see it as a great suffering, mm -hmm. but in our trials, um, we've learned and at first it was hard because you know I'm usually the one bringing mm -hmm. meals to other people mm -hmm. or helping serve mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. and we had to learn the graciousness of receiving mm -hmm. help because mm -hmm. you can't do it all on your own mm -hmm. and um, it, just the beauty of seeing the body of Christ and allowing other people and and mm -hmm. our family and our church family and mm -hmm. our friends have just, mm -hmm. they step up and mm -hmm. they say we want to do this and I'm like mm -hmm. I feel so bad because yeah. we're doing this a lot we're mm -hmm. going to the hospital a lot this mm -hmm. year and mm -hmm. And they're like, no, we want to serve, right. and we want to mm -hmm. help, and yeah. um, and that, that's the beauty again of the mm -hmm. suffering and the right. and the trials is, good is God always brings good from mm -hmm. from anything. Mm -hmm. Gary, for mm -hmm. you, uh, and for a lot of guys who are yeah. good husbands and dads, it's kind of like, uh, well, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not. <laughs> it's kind of like I I got this thing. I have to take care of everything. Yeah, you know, I, it's got. I don't mean you know a, a lot of the feminine things going on in the house, but it's kind of like I got to make sure everybody's safe, everybody's okay. I'm going to solve. The laundry's done. And, th and then <laughs> you find yourself, you, it's out of your control, you know, you're doing the best you can, then you get help from all over the place. A lot of guys just don't like a lot of help, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got people coming in, you can't do it. I mean, wow, you got to go down that road. You got to say, I need absolutely, help. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, you know, and it's, you know, it's a blessing to have good friends and family and, and, and church family and to, for that sake. Uh, but it is hard, you know, the hardest part is seeing your child, especially when they're putting them in the hospital and trying to find their veins for mm -hmm. their IVs. It's like, mm -hmm. you want to take that pain away from them right. having to get yeah. that in there. And, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, especially when they're young, like Allison, who's nine, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and you just want to take their pain. But you know that, you know, you just, yeah, you just have to bear yeah. with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I could remember, you know, your dad, God rest his soul. And when he had retired, and so it was my hope that he would come and help us at Her Choice Birmingham Women's mm -hmm. Center and help us out because he has good administrative skills and so on. And so I wanted to invite him down, Frank LaRusso. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I, I called him, I must have had a cell phone or something, and he was in, in the hospital, you know, I guess sitting mm -hmm. with, with uh, Jonathan, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, Frank, I really want you to come down. He says, where are you? And I said, well, I'm in the hospital, I'm sitting with Jonathan. It's kind of like, this is what I do now. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, this is what I, it, just his commitment and right. the importance of family. And he never did come to work with me <laughs> down there. <laughs> because he said, you know, you got so many kids, you know, and, yeah. and, and everything else. And he said, this, this is what we do. Right. And Joy and I are learning that as well now as, right. as grandparents. But Absolutely. you both have tremendous families and whether it's mm -hmm. friends or mm -hmm. family members, because mm -hmm. speak to the people, about what can you do to support families who are facing mm -hmm. children with chronic illness or disabilities or special needs? Um, what, what is it that's helpful for others to do, physically or verbally or whatever to say, you know, we, we care or we're here. You know? I think just knowing that people, um, just even people saying we're praying for you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you feel that, you feel that prayer cover and um, and just to call and say, do you do you want me to come to the hospital? Do you mm -hmm. need a break yeah. or do you yeah. need, um, or a lot of friends will just bring us good food, like mm -hmm. bring us Zoe's mm -hmm. or, you know, fun, um, <laughs> yeah. fun lunches because yeah. you get tired of the hospital yeah. food. Yeah. And, um, and bring us good food. Yeah, I remember yeah. when Joy was, <laughs> when Joy was ill, you know, battling cancer, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, you kind of do evaluate the food that's coming in. Right. right? <laughs> and it is nice to have a home cooked meal right. or if you're going to buy something someplace, you, you know, yeah. this is what we like. Right. So it, it may be quick food, but if you like it, yeah. what do you like? What do you want to bring? And, I, and I've even found that when we're in the hospital, um, you know, people sometimes say like, well, what value is there when you're just stuck in a room and what mm -hmm. can I do to mm -hmm. offer? You know, I know mm -hmm. people who are adults with CF that I've gotten mm -hmm. to be friends with and and sometimes they feel this, um, like my life is not valuable. Mm -hmm. I'm just here. Why mm -hmm. am I here suffering? Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. have nothing to offer. But yet, um, when you unite that suffering with God and offer it up, you, even just your prayers in the hospital room mm -hmm. yeah. can mm -hmm. go forth and um, and to help others and to be a blessing to the nurses, be a blessing right. to the people down the hall. Right. And you know, there's there's ways you can. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> well, how have yeah. you and Gary, I mean, because it is, it is a trial. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not the norm. Um, how have you two uh, been able to endure this and, and your commitment to each other just to say, well, this is just too much. I'm so out of here. They do endure, <laughs> but you know, yeah. I know these two. Yeah. I, she's always doing something, you know, with her friends. And he's hunting and fishing with the brothers. They are enduring, but they have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's right. and that's important therapy, yeah, important. isn't it? It, it is. is. It, it is. is. To get away and, and do things. And, you know, I... And I, especially my the boys, Jonathan including, I, I get them all out hunting and doing fishing and stuff like that. So it keeps them active, you mm -hmm. know. It's very important for, especially the two at CF, to, to stay active mm -hmm. and, and in sports and things to keep their lungs clear. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, it is, it's, we have a fun life and we have mm -hmm. a good But a good it's great. hard too, it's not to put this beautiful picture no, like no. it's all easy right. because right. it's not. Sometimes you say yes to God and yes, mm -hmm. we'll be open to having more children. But then the reality of this is a hard walk, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. God, you know, calls you on the narrow path sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, and and there's times where I remember when Allison was diagnosed. Um, for some reason, mm -hmm. Gary took it a lot harder at that time, and I was okay, and mm -hmm. I was able to kind of help him. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then there's other times where I lose it, and I just I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then he kind of rises to mm -hmm. the occasion, right. and and we just have to balance each other out mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and communicate mm -hmm. and pray to, we pray a lot like yeah. as a family mm -hmm. and individually mm -hmm. and plug into like the sacramental life we plug mm -hmm. into adoration um, mm -hmm. just our prayer as a family at night we mm -hmm. don't we're not consistent every single night but we try to yeah. on our own share mm -hmm. our faith with mm -hmm. our children and mm -hmm point them, um, but, but then to come together, even if it's for five minutes at night. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And pray together. Sure, and he's great at leading us. Got somebody who wants okay, to we have an email. Dear Lainey and Gary, how do your children help around the house? Do they have assigned chores or is it all hands on deck? And this is Irene from Wisconsin. You want to answer that? Well, part of it is it's all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like after dinner, everybody has to clean the, the kitchen mm -hmm. and put dishes away and everything before they can leave and go to do their homework or uh, other activities. Um, and we, and we, each individual child has to keep their room area clean. Mm -hmm. and so it and is, so it is all, all hands, hands on deck. Two with the chronic illness don't get out of stuff. Oh, no, nope, mm -hmm. them as well. Yeah. There's no special <laughs> treatment for them. Because yeah. the others are glad yeah. about yeah. that. And because the other ones would <laughs> resent it oh, even yeah. too. Absolutely. It'd just be like, you know, are you, oh, you yeah. pulling the CF card? You right. know, like yeah. what are you doing? I was beaten that? up for having yeah. chronic illness by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta clean up. Although there have been times like Jonathan recently just got out of the hospital and this time he came home with home IVs, which mm. was new. We mm -hmm. never, um, well, we had done it once before years ago, but, um, mm -hmm. and the, the duration of the treatments it, it is time consuming. Mm -hmm. So there are some times where we're like, okay, your chore this week is whatever, John, you do your best, or you make sure you do your treatments, but mm -hmm. they don't get out of, right. I mean, but there is some leeway because mm -hmm. it's, it's a time consuming. And the older they get, the more treatments mm -hmm. they have and, mm -hmm. the, and the longer it takes they time take. to be well. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, we, and we don't see any resentment among the kids yeah. for mm -hmm. it either. Because you know, during our prayer time, they all, you know, going around for intentions, they all say, well, for healing on Jonathan Allison and right. the CF. So mm -hmm. there's no mm -hmm. resentment there. And, I, and they understand that, it, yeah. you know, part of the treatment takes time. Mm -hmm. and so, so. The four who don't have this mm -hmm. chronic illness, have they come to you not in resentment, but in concern or, or questioning why is this happening to them? or? or you know, where's God in all of this, or I feel bad for him, or is it just kind of we're rolling along here, we know what's going on and we're just all together, it's all hands on deck and we're just doing it. Have they ever shared the, the impact that this is having on them? Or? I remember, well, I, one yeah. thing I do remember, this was years ago when Allison was first diagnosed, and um, so Hannah and Jonathan and Jacob were little, they were a lot younger, and we were sitting around the kitchen table and we had had her tested and we're mm -hmm. waiting on the results. Mm -hmm. And that night we said, um, we got the results in and Allison does have cystic fibrosis. And I remember Hannah just started crying mm -hmm. at the table and she was like, oh, you know, and, um, and mm -hmm. Jonathan was like, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And to him, it was funny because he's like, it's no big deal. Yeah. Why yeah. are you crying? Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it kind of showed how um, he wanted to come. And he was like, excited. Yeah. He was yeah. like, yes. If somebody yeah. else to share. Somebody right. else to share. Yeah. You know, so he didn't feel right. Like alone. he was the odd yeah. man yeah. out. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of made us look at it the way he sees it. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like this it's is just normal. a part of, a part of to life. them. It's you just get up, you brush your teeth, you mm -hmm. do your treatments. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, you, your, how great is the faith? You know, like you said, you come from good families, you're people of prayer, and because you get a bad diagnosis, a problematic diagnosis, 
while in utero or after, mm -hmm. and of course there's the initial shock and everything that goes on, but your perspective is the value and dignity of every mm -hmm. person is not based on mm -hmm. their perfection or longevity right. of life. We, we mm -hmm. go through the suffering together, but uh, it's just beautiful to hear the faith, to hear the, the witness. What would you share with people out there who may have just gotten a, a difficult prenatal mm -hmm. diagnosis or maybe it's not prenatal diagnosis, they, they just find out something about mm -hmm. their child, about themselves, they're out here and it just seems like, you know, life has just come to an end mm -hmm. or maybe we should end our lives or maybe the best thing to do is to terminate, you know, right. this, this child and, and what a day to share the gospel mm -hmm. of life because like you said earlier, like there's so many voices mm -hmm. and there's so much uh, painting of images and pictures that, that make this so difficult right. and, and, and I think the teaching, things are difficult. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but what and would you speak to people that, that would be feeling that anxiety? Well, and now they have pre, w they didn't have this when our children were younger, but they, they now do prenatal diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So when we had Michael, when we went in, we found out we were pregnant, we go to the doctor, they now, in the very first packet you receive, there's a thing, do you want to be tested to see if your child has cystic fibrosis? Mm -hmm. And that's in, I think everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so there are more and more people now before the child is even born finding out that their child does have yeah. this mm -hmm. genetic mm -hmm. disease. Um, and so I think, and that, like I said, the initial shock and fear and you're in a vulnerable place mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm afraid because of that more and more people are choosing and they read the horrible statistics right, or sure. they read the whatever right, and they think, right. oh, we can't bear this, we don't want to do this mm -hmm. and so they terminate the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yet if you look at our children and all right. you just mm -hmm. see the life mm -hmm. and and um, the joy and yes there's yeah. struggles but there's mm -hmm. joy in the midst mm -hmm. of everything. You know, and not to overly spiritualize I forget the, the scripture you were quoting earlier you can quote that one again but I think of the man born blind and then the mm -hmm. question comes up who sinned mm -hmm. that this happened mm -hmm. and sometimes we think oh, maybe I did something is that yeah. and the Lord said you know no one sinned here it's that the works of God may be made manifest mm -hmm. through him and the verse you used mm -hmm. early was like the glory of the Lord to mm -hmm. be revealed mm -hmm. and so not to over spiritualize the suffering mm -hmm. and the hurt and the pain but there's no doubt about it that people who suffer mm -hmm. especially children or there's a, a disability I think of so mm -hmm. many down syndrome right. mm -hmm. men and women or boys and girls and if you look for the face of the Lord if you look for their mm -hmm. uniqueness mm -hmm. It's amazing what's coming through them. Right. The, the Christ mm -hmm. is visiting right. with us. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, but it's a whole other way of, of looking and, and perceiving. And also keeping, I think we've talked about before, um, and you jump in, Gary, but keeping an eternal perspective. Right. Because mm -hmm. our life on this so earth is like a drop of mm -hmm. water in mm -hmm. compared to eternity. Compared to eternity. Right. And, and God doesn't make mistakes when He creates His child in you. So, you know, every, every child has an opportunity to spend eternity with God. Mm -hmm. Why should we block? that opportunity for that child. Well, I, I want to say something because we were in teams with you, Teams of Our Lady, mm -hmm. which is a marriage group. And, and I'm, I just was coming in, you know, I was mm -hmm. in the Catholic Church and knew to all of some of the language, you know, because the language is different mm -hmm. from Protestant land to Catholic <laughs> land. And you had said, um, uh, well, you know, uh, we were like just eating. And you mm -hmm. just said, well, you know, it's a soul for all eternity. Who am I to say the soul can't, you know, be here for yeah. all eternity? And, I, and you just said it and you really meant it. But I was just like, for all eternity. Yeah. So what, what if Jonathan lives to be uh, 52 or whatever mm -hmm. their age limit mm -hmm. is? And, um, he, but he's eternal, <laughs> he's an oh, eternal yeah. soul. And, you know, and I, when you said it, it was just like, you really believed it. Okay. And, and that was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Joe, we have. Okay, Nicola. we have Susan. Susan, welcome, you're at home with Jim and Joy. Hi, Joy and Jim. I'm so excited to get my call in, and congratulations on the show, and I think you're both absolutely wonderful, and Joy, you're so beautiful, and I love your smile. Thank you. You're uh, kind. Uh, you know, I'm calling because I'm hoping to do some counseling in the future with Right to Life at my local uh, chapter, and I anticipate I'll have someone come in the door that is not of any financial means and they're uh, considering abortion because they can't see their way to taking care of a child with disabilities and uh, not being able to work full time and uh, having medical treatments to look, look to and, and the financial aspects of medical bills and such. And I wonder how you counsel 
uh, someone coming into your clinic with that kind of situation. Well, I mean, it's just, it was what Gary and Lainey were sharing. Every life is sacred. Even when we had our client last, um, you know, last week when we were sharing about Dorothy, um, every human life is sacred from the moment of conception until natural death. Mm -hmm. And and who are we to say, uh, no one knows the length of our days. Mm -hmm. And if, if the child is conceived, it is sacred and it is of high value mm -hmm. to the Lord. And their soul from the moment of conception is eternal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we can all make up the hardest answers, you know, mm -hmm. all the hardest excuses. But even for our client, Dorothy, and this is what we deal with day in and day out, we all paint the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. you know, as if we can look in the crystal ball and go, oh, your life is doomed. We, we, never, we never think, and what if in a, a year from now, I meet this great guy who just loves me and we're madly mm -hmm. in love and he wants to adopt my child and, we're, and then nobody ever goes down that road. It's, mm -hmm. always, it's always sabotage mm -hmm. unto death. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, no. And, and I think we have to have a heavenly perspective. Mm -hmm. And it is true, is what is God saying about mm -hmm. this life? Mm -hmm. Not all the voices, we can't, we, you know, I always say to a client, what is your number one reason why you want to abort this child? And you know she'll say ridiculous things like, "It's just not the right time in my life." Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my mom had eight kids. None of them were the right time. None of them <laughs> were planned. You know, but she had eight beautiful kids. And who? And you know, she would she would even say to us at the table, she would say, "Who who would I say I didn't want around here?" Exactly. You know. And mm -hmm. but but we 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 think selfishly, and we need to think selfless. Mm -hmm. And and it is difficult. And there's a and we always have to restore the value and dignity of the person as she is there mm -hmm. and to provide hope and and the truth and compassion mm -hmm. tell her the truth mm -hmm. compassion is telling the truth mm -hmm. in love right. not mm -hmm. not making mm -hmm. it easier yeah. mm -hmm. the, the other thing that came to mind as you were sharing joy is that not only do we have to share and we can prove the humanity mm -hmm. and the personhood beginning from the moment of conception you don't have to be religious right. to do that mm -hmm. okay and, and basic human rights, whether you're a believer or not, and also the fact that there's real no benefit of this for the baby or for you. It just mm -hmm. unleashes a whole other set of problems. So we have right. all that. But I think the offer of community mm -hmm. is really, and, that, right. and that's what Dorothy had when she came in. Mm -hmm. That's what the women are finding who are coming, right. and, and guys who are coming in to say, you know what, we're with you all mm -hmm. the way. And well, at, you know, yeah. at Children's Hospital, where our children go, right. um, they had a program and they called us immediately because actually Gary and I have shared um, mm -hmm. our story right. with many doctors and nurses at CF conferences because people were amazed at it. Like, we didn't think anything of it. We just were you having just children. Your life. <laughs> and, um, but they were like, wow, you know, we just have never met anybody that wants to keep having children after mm -hmm. having a CF diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so we would go and we would speak mm -hmm. at these conferences um, and just share, but, but they all just came away. Even the doctors would be the truth because mm -hmm. it is the truth. Right. Um, would speak to them and um, mm -hmm. and because of that, they said, "Can we give your name and number to newly diagnosed parents?" Excellent. Yes. And so on several occasions, we've yeah. gotten phone calls mm -hmm. from people who are newly diagnosed, mm -hmm. and we're a physical mm -hmm. yeah. person right, right here that can right. touch and talk. You're a real life human you're being. You're, human not, being you're not that a can say, on, a, on the Google. Yeah, it's not yeah. just something you read. Right. Um, but we could, we could encourage and give them hope yeah. and, and yeah. just, and they could call us if they felt <laughs> overwhelmed yeah. or had yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. been a really neat um, way to mentor. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. and another thing I wanted to mention was um, the, um, the suffering again, just going back to that, the difficulty, like the caller said with the financial, mm -hmm. there are difficulties mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. hard. And, mm -hmm. but um, when we all think about anytime we've had a trial in our life mm -hmm. and we've come through it on the other side and we look back, how much better we are. Right. And we, mm -hmm. uh, and the fruit that comes from that. Right. And um, we come out more compassionate, more caring, uh, more faith filled. And so we're able to reach out to others yeah. who mm -hmm. have gone through a similar. And so, um, and I think it's just a human tendency to shy from any sort of mm -hmm. suffering or yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. But then once we've gone through it, it's like, wow, God was with me through it. I, I survived mm -hmm. and now we can help others. We can be the instrument of the Lord, you know, cause we've gone through it, like you said, mm -hmm. to help those who are dealing with it firsthand right there. Yeah. You know, so. And what I was trying to say earlier was, I hope you're aware that your, I think your email is up. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so you're going to be getting emails that's and your Facebook that's is fine. up. That's fine. So you may have people, I really hope that they that's do absolutely because yeah. there's mm -hmm. that community again, right. that being able to share with somebody who's faced this because illusion or, or just contemplating this is so much worse sometimes mm -hmm. than the actual reality. At right. least you're there, you're, you're in it, mm -hmm. you're there. And to hear somebody say, not only have we survived this, but we're thriving it's th in the midst right. of it. We don't wish this upon anybody, but mm -hmm. our family's right. strong, our right. kids are strong, they mm -hmm. know who they are, it's increased mm -hmm. our faith, mm -hmm. we understand the true value of life. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as we're sharing, uh, Pope Francis speaks about the throwaway culture, mm -hmm. and this is what we're speaking about with these mm -hmm. diagnoses mm -hmm. and that people just, you know, it's like you cast off the child or, th or the culture mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. death. So this has become the value painlessness, at least for me, mm -hmm. maybe not for my child, who's, who's we're going to abort, mm -hmm. uh, versus the value and the dignity of every human being and the face of God in every mm -hmm. human being and living for mm -hmm. all eternity with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Critical. You know, I always share, you know, my children, and they were healthy, quote unquote, <laughs> um, you know, they bring out the best in you and mm -hmm. they bring out the worst in you, right? <laughs> and so uh, these are opportunities for your faith to be challenged mm -hmm. and your faith to grow. And there's nothing, no higher stake than mm -hmm. your children, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no higher stake. And so it's, and it could strengthen your marriage or it could be, you know, like it could separate you, mm -hmm. you know? And, but in faith, you know, God's mm -hmm. just saying, let me prove myself mm -hmm. to you. Let mm -hmm. me show myself strong, mm -hmm. you know, but we got to work with it. We got to, mm -hmm. we got to be humble. We got to be a praying dad. Mm -hmm. We got to be a praying mom. And, and we have to take our children to church, whether we feel like it or not and, mm -hmm. and love mom and say, I'm sorry. And, <laughs> and do all the things that we got to do. Right? right. Absolutely. I think it's important for the father who is the head of the household, who is supposed to provide the physical things for mm -hmm. the children, but mm -hmm. the most important is the spiritual things for the children. And I think it's important just to them to see the father or dad go to mass, lead the prayers the, in the household. Um, it is. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. It is. So. And you are a beautiful leader, a tremendous mm -hmm. leader. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the impact in my life of seeing men down on their knees praying for a man to see that. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to be mm -hmm. as a couple. That's where you both have been your tremendous blessing and we just have a, a few seconds left here. Maybe you want to share a closing word with our with I our family. Like, I would just like to share that regardless if it's illness, it could be depression, it doesn't have to be a, a medical condition, it could be the suffering of loneliness. It could be, mm -hmm. we are all faced with different sufferings in this life, but um, I think just the sovereignty of God and just saying yes, like our mother Mary mm -hmm. did. She mm -hmm. didn't know what her yes was gonna cost her ahead of time, mm -hmm. but God presented her with something and she said yes, and she ushered in salvation for the entire world. And so just every day um, saying yes to the will of God, whether mm -hmm. that hurts, whether it's hard, whether mm -hmm. it's joyful, whether mm -hmm. it's sorrowful, um, just living lives in total surrender um, because he's our father and he loves us and he's trustworthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's we're trustworthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave that right there. Mm -hmm. That's a great <laughs> story and a tremendous ending. Gary Laney, thank you so much for thank being with you. us and sharing thank your you witness and your testimony. Yes. We're going to a break at this point and when we come back, we'll be joined by Father Leonard. Stay right there where you are. You're at home with Jim and Joy. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and right now we have Father Leonard on Hello. the couch, and we're going to be hearing from him in a minute. But right now we have a special message from a pro-life expert, Stephanie Gray. So let's take a look. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Jim and Joy. You know, a deeply troubling statistic is that over 90% of preborn children diagnosed with Down syndrome are killed by abortion. Too often, when families are met with the news of a poor prenatal diagnosis, the medical profession offers them death instead of perspective. That's why I love the work of photographer Rick Guidotti, who has made it his purpose to help capture the beauty, dignity, and wonder of those who are different. His campaign is called Positive Exposure, and he directs his award-winning fashion industry 
industry photography experience into capturing the stunning beauty and powerful stories of those who lead a life with genetic, physical, and behavioral differences. His tagline is, change how you see, see how you change. It's perspective like that which is desperately needed when families face a poor prenatal diagnosis. My friend and author Leticia Velasquez helps families along this journey in her book, A Special Mother is Born, which includes her own story about raising a child with Down syndrome. I was deeply struck by the portion where she talks about how, as her daughter Christina was sleeping in her arms, she thought about Jesus' mother mothering him, and she reflected on her own mothering of her daughter and meditated on the commonalities between Jesus and children with special needs. This was her inspiration. Mary bore a child like no other, a child who did not conform to society's expectations. He was different from the others. He gazed upon heaven when the rest could only see clouds. He reminded them of their failings, their lack of charity, their shallowness, their impatience, and their rush to judgment. His government tried to kill him and eventually succeeded. He had to endure constant misunderstandings of what he was trying to communicate and bore the frustration of those who misunderstood him. He was mocked and rejected, and at times it seemed only his mother still stood by him. She felt the loneliness of seeing her son rejected because he was different, yet she bore the pain patiently because she knew that it was for us, the least of these, that he suffered and died. And indeed, as Jesus tells us in Matthew 25, whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did for me. Back to you, Jim and Joy. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, what an eloquent mm -hmm. spokesperson on behalf of the gospel of life. Powerful and heartbreaking. She starts out by saying uh, approximately 90% mm -hmm. of children diagnosed with Down syndrome mm -hmm. are aborted. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're yeah. killed. Mm -hmm. um, very, very painful and uh, then she relates later on in her sharing about uh, our blessed mother loving her son being with yeah. her son as that that mother who who uh, welcomed yeah. a, a child with Down syndrome pondering that the association of you know Jesus said I must suffer many things and be rejected and I will be killed and on the third day I'll arise again oh, yeah. praise the Lord but yeah, I, I'm really making that connection with those with prenatal mm -hmm. diagnosis who are really, mm -hmm. they will suffer much, not only physically, but from society, from culture, mm -hmm. sometimes from the mother yeah. uh, herself, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll suffer many things. They'll be rejected mm -hmm. and, and be killed. That's a profound oh, yeah. correlation and connection there of the mystery of the child uh, in relationship to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And First, we, you know, first and foremost, we see the, the beauty of life, mm -hmm. and you know, even with the with the Down syndrome children, they're they're so pure, they're they're very loving mm -hmm. um, people, and uh, you know, the Lord says, uh, says, "Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God," and and they see God. Yeah. You know, they're 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 always so so compassionate, mm -hmm. so so warm. You know, I've I've never seen any any one any of them mean or anything. The, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're always su such loving yeah. loving people. Yeah. And and you know the those with disabilities and uh, those who uh, who were sick. These are the are the ones uh, Jesus was closest with that's the most. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that's who he came. And and the scriptures tell us he was with the blind, the lame, the crippled. You know, the the par uh, paralytic. You know, he was he, he was with them, spending time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and and so these are the ones that were closest to his heart. And uh, and so they, the sick and the disabled, they should be closest to our heart as well, right? Because they were close to the heart of Jesus, and they still are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Matthew yeah. twenty-five. Oh, you know, I was, I was sick, and you visited me. Mm -hmm. I was naked, and you clothed me. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was homeless, you welcomed me. Mm -hmm. I was homeless. You c can we not say I had a, a negative or mm -hmm. a poor prenatal diagnosis? Mm -hmm. And you welcome me. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. welcome mm -hmm. me. So this is not only about um, these people in utero, mm -hmm. which we were, but yeah. it's really about the mystery of Jesus yoked with them. And as we mm -hmm. do it unto the least, we oh, do yes. it unto them. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I know as, as we're speaking, I'm sure that there are many of our listeners who maybe were in situations like this. Mm -hmm. Dorothy, who we shared about, was in right. this situation. It was razor thin. She was going to go ahead and abort. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of our viewers out here have done that very thing. And I really, we want to say to you mm -hmm. that God is attracted to you too. Not right. what you've done, mm -hmm. but that God's come for the weak, the helpless, the sick, right. the sinner. And he wants you to know this mm -hmm. is not unpardonable. 
-hmm. that you can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And you need to get reconciled to God and to your child. So we want mm -hmm. a message of hope going yeah. out here to everybody. And God is the God of second chances, you know, and we, we say, we, uh, I, I, was, I was saying earlier that Jesus was those who were sick with, and, w and with the disabled. He was very close to them, but he was also close to sinners. He came mm -hmm. to sinners to save sinners right. and to give them another chance, right. you know, and, and with Jesus, we find new life, you know, he, uh, he'll forgive us our sins. And then after that, we work to repair. Right. You know, we work to do good. Right. And that's the beauty yes. of the gospel oh, yeah. of life. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of the healing sure. ministries mm -hmm. like Rachel's Vineyard and yeah. ways where women can, and men, mm -hmm. because I meet with clients and men are post-abortive too. Mm -hmm. And um, e in just sharing with them, just the wreckage of their life mm -hmm. from that life choice, you know, oh, and so yeah. you're able to connect them doctors and say, yeah. now, now you need to be restored. Now you need to mm -hmm. be healed because yeah. Jesus wants to make you whole. Yeah. That's right. And I do want to say if there are people out there hurting in that way, yeah. you know, do contact us at jimenjoy at ew10.com, sure. jimenjoy at ew10.com. Mm -hmm. We can make sure that you get involved in a group like Rachel's Vineyard mm -hmm. um, and you need that, that support. Father, another thing that Stephanie, mm -hmm. who I'm just so impressed mm -hmm. with her, yeah. uh, she was really quoting this uh, photographer mm -hmm. and she was, he was saying, change how you see. Mm -hmm and see how you change. Right. Mm -hmm. Change how you're looking at right. people. Change how you're seeing them. Mm -hmm. Another holy man said, in every face is the face mm -hmm. of God. It's just failed right. and in a real. Mm -hmm. Change how you see, mm -hmm. you'll change. So mm -hmm. that that's critical, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. This is me, Jesus mm -hmm. is saying. This is mm -hmm. this is me yeah. you're Je looking at. And Jesus looks at the good in all of us. You right. know, he sees the potential. You know, he sees what we're capable of. And that's why he, he's quick to forgive us because he knows we can do better. Right. You know, and uh, and so with all of us, the same way, you know, sometimes it's very easy just to look at the negative. Yeah. But but God can do all things with God as a God of the impossible yeah. and begins by looking at the heart of somebody, yeah. just looking, looking to see where their potential is, where their gifts are. And it's so important yeah. because the culture of death mm -hmm. wants to eliminate, oh, yeah. annihilate, make it go yeah. away so that you, you know, we mm -hmm. we're like repelled if it's right. if it's not beautiful and perfect mm -hmm. and holy. It's like that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. No, no mm -hmm. child is. No. is a mistake even if it's an unplanned pregnancy right. the child is not a mistake mm -hmm. it's a gift course, um, and yeah. it's a blessing and we have to we have to change the language not from a burden mm -hmm. but to a blessing and as a mm -hmm. gift Maybe. and so That's really right. it is what Stephanie was saying we mm -hmm. need to change the way we look and then see the way we change mm -hmm. you know it's like wait a minute you're perfect mm -hmm. you're holy you yeah. you belong to God That's right. you yeah. know yeah perspective mm -hmm. how are you seeing this uh, I remember somebody brought to me this this picture and, and they said, well, is this, is this a, a witch mm -hmm. or an old hag or is this mm -hmm. a beautiful woman? Mm -hmm. And you look at it and one minute you see a witch mm -hmm. and the next minute you just kind of move and you see this, this attractive woman. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of perspective and how oh, you're yeah. seeing things. And yeah. we need to say to our Christian people and to non-Christian people mm -hmm. that the perspective really needs to be mm -hmm. every life is of inestimable yeah. worth, value and dignity simply for the essence of their being and who they are as human beings. Father, That's would you right. give us would you give us a, a blessing? Sure, sure. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the gift of life, Lord, and we thank you that you've blessed us with so much and that you love us so dearly, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you open our eyes, Lord, to see the true beauty of life, but to more importantly, see with your eyes, Lord, yes. that we may look into the hearts, we may see goodness in all people and in all things. And Lord, we make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and may Almighty God bless you all and give you strength and peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hope that you enjoyed being with us today. Remember, you are precious in the sight of Almighty God. You are of inestimable worth, value, and dignity. Thanks for being a part of the EWTN family, and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.